Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Nita here and today I have a G. <laughs> we are gonna be talking about, I guess like house hunting tips? Yes, some key house hunting tips that we learned along the way. This is actually kind of long. So there's like house hunting tips and there's also just tips after you've found the house and like steps afterwards. So we're gonna just keep this one just to the house hunting process, what you should do before you begin physically going to houses and then um, we'll do another video like part two for yeah. afterwards I think <laughs> just to make it to where it's not a 30 minute long video. All right, you ready? So our first tip, I know it seems pretty obvious, but do your research. Yeah. Because I actually started looking for houses in January of this year. So I was actually aggressively looking for houses for maybe six months. And my Zillow profile at its peak had about 350, 400 houses. Yeah. And so I think doing so like helped you realize like what you liked and yeah. you didn't like and that way you can also get an idea of overall price range because you've been looking for so long you get a feel for like okay this square footage this many bedrooms this location yeah. goes for about this much and so you did that i didn't do much research yeah. he kind of did most of it because i was still hung up on staying in new york i think you secretly knew we were going to be moving back yeah i was back. like oh, it's time <laughs> i had new build homes saved contemporary houses farm houses fixer uppers, all in different price ranges all over Dallas. And then once we started looking at them together yeah. and we started agreeing on certain houses together, then we kind of fleshed out, okay, this is what we want. This mm -hmm. is what we don't want. This is where we want to live. Yeah, so that's our biggest tip. Before you physically go look at houses, just do the research online for a little bit. Obviously we did for six months, no need to do it for that long, but just give yourself a little bit of time to research online. Yeah. Second thing is to just know that it is probably very much so impossible to get everything you want on your wish list. Make your wish list, like it's totally okay to have like your dream house list. Then from there, extract the things that you cannot compromise on versus the things that you might be able to let go of. We learned kind of the hard way that like you can't get everything, especially if you're like a first time home on, homeowner, you're, you're saving up and you have just a certain amount that you can put in towards your house. So just know that you have to give up on certain things. Like for us, we didn't want to give up on natural light. Mm -hmm. That was like a no compromise list. Yeah. And then something that we could give up on, which we kind of did was yard size and like the quality of the yard. Cause like <laughs> our backyard is not the best. <laughs> yeah. So we knew that going into it, but just kind of get a list going of things you can compromise on versus things that you can't. So our next tip is to actually shop for your mortgage rates, which I know sounds weird. When it comes to finding a lender, it's not just about how much they'll give you. There are a million different tiny fees that they can charge you for closing costs. And they also might not all give you the same rate or even the same amount. So be sure to at least look at three, maybe four different lenders before you actually decide to stick with one and get your pre-approval letter from them. And that leads us to the next point is get the pre-approval letter. Yes. Before you physically go into the fun part, which is like going in houses and open houses and whatever it may be, get the pre-approval letter because that's the only thing that's gonna tell you truly what you can afford. You may think you can afford a certain amount when it comes to buying a house, but a lender will actually tell you what you can afford. Yeah. Because they do this many, many times on a daily basis. So they will probably know a lot better than you do. Yeah, so they're responsible for <laughs> basically telling you what you can afford. Do not fall for like the mortgage calculators online, things like that. Yeah, Just those don't work. No. I think the next one is really location, right? People always talk yes. about location. You might've heard that a million times before, but that's because it is that important. Yeah. Um, figure yeah. out honestly, like your daily lifestyle activities, where your, where your job's gonna be, maybe where you wanna take your kid, what school you want your kids to go to. Things like that's very important because for us, at least in our experience, we wanted to be pretty close to our parents within a 30 minute drive from both of our parents. Yeah. So we looked in that radius and we ruled out houses that or too far. And then I know we don't have a conventional commute to actually check the traffic. Yeah. Our commute is really to our parents' house. <laughs> so what I did was I, I waited till about 5 p.m. and then I went on Apple Maps and Google Maps and I checked how long it would take with traffic to actually get home, get over there. Yeah. And then that really helped our decision because we're next to a bunch of highways. Yeah, so just like do the same thing, like do your research, check traffic times at different times of day, or if you're able to drive to the house and back at different times, that'll give you a feel of school zones that you didn't yeah. know will get in the way or just general traffic in or whatever maybe. Um, it's just kind of good to know that route or the traffic. 
to your main places that you go to. <laughs> yeah, and if it matters to you, check and see how busy the actual street is that you're buying a house on because it may look like a normal residential street, mm -hmm. but it might be a secret shortcut that might be an exit off of a highway that leads to someplace else that people are trying to get to that you may not know about until you actually go to the street and check. Just also do your due diligence when it comes to, like this kind of falls into location, but check the crime rates check um, school districts and grocery stores we wanted to be near like some grocery stores <laughs> um, road noise was also we totally yeah. ruled out one of one house because it was basically on it was a road house is what I like to call it. I'm sure there's a technical term but it was a house where like it wasn't in a neighborhood it was just a road and I was like wow this is gonna get loud real quick and I also wanted more of a neighborhood feel and you just don't get that so there's certain things that you look for also I don't know how much y'all believe into power lines, but we've ruled out some houses because there's massive power lines, like the big ones, yeah. not like the small ones, but the big ones that, what, are the, what, what does it give off? Some sort of radiation? Like oh. electromagnetic radiation or something. I don't yeah. know. There's, there's research on it, but it's like different views, viewpoints. But anyways, we ruled out houses because of that. So you got to figure out what's important to you. Do your research with all those things. I feel like crime is definitely an important one. I think the next tip is budgeting. <laughs> yes. The budgeting is very important because a house will quickly get a lot more expensive than you first think mm -hmm. it can because there's an old rule of home buying that everything starts breaking as soon as you buy the house which thankfully hasn't happened to us yet. What it means is there's a lot of mini expenses you may not have thought of ahead of time that eventually start showing up like HOA fees, lawn care fees, lender fees, you have to think of lender two. fees to property taxes. Yes, factor in your property taxes because you may think, oh, this monthly payment's fine, but if your property taxes are an extra $2,000 a month, that's an extra $24,000 a year yeah. that you hadn't even anticipated. You have to think of homeowner's insurance. There's a lot of fees that kind of add up, uh, just besides the baseline yes. price that you see um, for the house. And so also know that if you're you know, moving into a new build or new construction, there may not be any window treatments, things like that. Yes. I mean, we're learning the hard way. Window treatments are insanely, insanely expensive. Have a little bit of extra for all those fees that's gonna come your way. This is kind of a random one. <laughs> I think it's because I went to law school and I read lots of horror stories with real estate and stuff, but just check to see if you have any trees, you know, that you own on your property line, your backyard, front yard, and see if any branches or things like that are hovering over your neighbor's cars or roof or whatever it may be. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if you own the tree, yeah. you're kind of sort of, depending on the state and whatever, but you might be liable. We actually had to have an arborist come out and trim. heavily trim our trees because a, a lot of the thick, heavy branches were extending way over way. our property line, over our neighbor's driveway. Yeah. And if there's a severe enough storm, that shit is gonna fall <laughs> right on top of their cars. I love storms, but then every time I have a storm, I'm like, oh my God, what's the wind speed at? Is it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So just like know if that's something that like you are, you might be paranoid over like I am, um, just know that you need to possibly yeah. trim the tree every it's so often. all of the little things. Little things. Something minor, just try to see if you can visit the house after it rains to see if your backyard drains properly. Just a minor thing, but I feel like we've, we kind of notice things like that now. Yeah. So it would have been good to check beforehand. This is a rule that I actually had to learn the hard way. Do not fall in love with a home. There are lots of pretty homes out there. If you walk into one and you fall in love with it, do not make a decision yeah. right then and there and say, this is the house, I'm gonna get this house. No, no matter what, visit it once, mask your feelings, have a strong poker face growing. And then if you love the house, come back later in a few days after you've slept on it a few times, and then you'll be able to see a lot of things you didn't really notice before. Yeah, I feel like sometimes, you know, at least we were so blinded by lots of the pretty things that we saw in the house, and then later when we came back, we started noticing the other things. It's like, yeah. oh, well, this doesn't have this, or this is gonna be a problem, or this is gonna be another expense. So it's good to check on a house that you like at first multiple times, yeah. take your feelings out of it a little bit. Like, I think we came to this house and walked through it maybe at least three times. Yeah, and our parents to did be, too. Yeah, just to be absolutely sure, like, okay, this yeah. is the one, are we sure, are we sure, and then. Yeah, and yeah. don't be afraid to get people, like your loved ones involved. Like, it was so helpful to have our parents and another set of eyes look at things too from their perspective, especially since they're more experienced. The next tip I have is honestly just try not to rush. Yeah. 
Yes, do not rush. <laughs> the whole process because home buying takes a while and there's just a lot. Even like when it comes to closing on a house, that whole process takes a while. So just yeah. know it's not like an overnight process. You're going to go to a house tomorrow. I mean, I think maybe some, some people have that luck where they just go and buy. And if you're in a position where you have to, totally I get it. But if you're able to just slowly <laughs> get a house and don't rush it and really assess all your options, then do it, do that route. When you do find the house that you like and you've kind of looked at it a couple of times, know that everything is pretty much negotiable. So before you get into like closing and all those things, like try to negotiate all the things that bother you. Like one, one kind of regret I had was not asking our builder to take care of the tree, like trim the tree prior to us closing. Like that should have been on our punch list. Yeah. Um, like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to get this house until this is done and cleaned up. I should have done those small things. I feel like they would have agreed to it and said we had to take care of it, which was a small cost, but something that could have been done prior to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like negotiate all the little things. Um, obviously it's going to depend on whether you're getting an older home or you have a new build. Like we have a warranty with our like new build. Like that's a total, that's a whole nother YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like. But just know that it, think lots of things are negotiable no matter what. When you're negotiating for price of the home, bring up all of the flaws and all the things that you don't like about the home. Cause yeah. I said, for instance, look, all of the grass is dead in a very specific part of the backyard. Also the, also, the backyard isn't level. There were outlets that were a misaligned. Just lots of little small things that add up and that say, look, we, we love the house. We want to buy it, but you got to fix. X, Y, and Z things. That, that, that. This is a huge tip that I learned from my dad, actually. When you do find a home you like, get your realtor to pull up a CMA on it, which is the comparative market value, which will tell you or tell the realtor how many houses have been sold in the neighborhood for, you know, let's just say a year and at what value. It's just so good to know your neighboring houses, how much they're going for, are they selling? You definitely don't want to be the most expensive by far uh, house in the neighborhood. No, do not be the prettiest face in the room. <laughs> Find a new room. It's really helpful to know if houses are selling in the neighborhood and what they're selling at. That can also help you with negotiating also the house that you might like too. Because if a house near you, similar kind of features, square footage and whatnot, is sold for much lower, you could probably negotiate at that price too. Yeah. So just helpful things that you can ask your realtor about and to have your realtor do that digging in. So just make sure you have a good realtor. Don't be sticking to the listing agent. <laughs> Find a realtor that has your back, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's also an important tip. Do your research, word of mouth. Also going back to unexpected fees, I just remember this, but as soon as you close for the house, you are responsible for everything that mm -hmm. happens in the house, that happens to the house, and, and that includes all utilities, your electric bill, your gas bill, yeah. any HOA fees you might have, your your parking spot if you if you decide to buy a condo, you need to start paying that on day one. Make sure you don't get any penalties. Yeah, so just transfer things properly. Get Pay your utilities. Yeah. So that's also just like a hidden fee that we just remembered. Um, but the day you close, you are responsible. Just know yes. that. <laughs> All right, and then we're kind of breezing through this. But I guess the last tip for house hunting specifically is just pull back and figure out the why and what, like ask yourself, why do you want to buy the house? I think that's really important because you don't want to go in and think, oh my gosh, I. 10 years from now, I'm gonna make so much money from this house. Like you can't control that at all. Like the market, no. you can't control the market. So just make sure you are buying a house that you feel comfortable with, that fits your family's needs, that you get to make the most out of and don't really focus so much on, oh, I'm gonna make X amount of money in three years if I sell it, you know yes, what I mean? exactly. Um, unless that's your goal and, <laughs> and your house flipping. But for us, it's more so like, okay, we, we want to make memories in this house with our new baby and this location, this house, the features in it, all of that fits our needs the most yes. and the best. And it'll actually improve your quality of life. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people were trying to buy houses for profit up until when 2008 happened. Ruined shit for a lot of people. Yeah. So make sure that you're buying it because you're at that stage of your life. Yeah, so just buy for the right reason. I'm gonna throw one more in. Well, it's not really house hunting. <laughs> But it's just something that's been like, so our next video is leaking. It's leaking. But like when you get into the closing part of it, try to see if you can get a closing period for 10 days. I think we did seven days and I felt really, really rushed to get the inspection done, the appraisal done and all these little things. 
So um, just try to get the uh, option period. Was it option period? Is that what it called? Option period. Option yeah. period for ten days. Just it gives you a little more time to find someone to do the inspection and the in the appraisal. And, yes. Or I know your lender does the appraisal, but it takes time. So, you know, people are busy. I think that's it, you guys. We kind of breezed through this, but there was a lot I wanted to get through for house hunting tips. I was trying to like look at my notes and then remember all things that we went through all the pain <laughs> points and things we learned. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. And if you are in this stage of life, like congratulations, because it's honestly so exciting, so exciting, um, stressful for sure, but exciting yeah. and so worth it. So um, enjoy it, enjoy the process and don't beat yourself up over making a mistake either because if you're a first time home buyers, like everyone's gonna make a mistake, I mean, many mistakes I'm sure yeah. and so it's very normal you're like learning as you go I'm just hoping that our tips kind of help you and guide you a little bit um, but if you have any questions about house buying in general leave it down below and if you like this type of video definitely let me know um, I think a part two will be more so what to do after you close the blue tape process that was just so fun punch list like all the little things you need to do afterwards but I don't know I'm just rambling now so <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will chat soon bye, bye. guys <laughs>